Well, I guess we could probably get started. Um, is everybody in here for the dance workshop? Yes, okay. <laughs> just, just making sure. That's awesome. Uh, well, my name is Betty Kondo. Um, thanks for, for being here. And uh, when Caleb asked me if I would teach a dance workshop, um, I reminded him that I would be 38 weeks pregnant. <laughs> so unfortunately, we will not be doing dance, but we will talk about dance and uh, the things that we do talk about. You can take with you and dialogue with the Lord and uh, activate and um, put those things into practice, whether it's here or back at your churches. Are most of you from this area? No? Yes? People from here? Yes? People not from here? Okay. Okay, Radiant Portage. I know. We, we actually just moved here, my husband and I, uh, four, five months ago. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know where anything is. <laughs> but, yeah, I know someone said it's a mitten, so you just look at your left hand. <laughs> so I know that we are in the southwest part of Michigan. Yes. That's about all I know. <laughs> yep. Right here. Wait. Right here. Okay. Got it. Cool. Well, um, yeah, for those that don't know you, my name is Betty, and um, I am super excited to to do this workshop, it's you know it's pretty easy to talk about something that you're really passionate about and you love. So I'll try not to. I'll keep an eye on the time, make sure we don't go too long. But um, yeah, just, thanks for being here. And man, this morning session was so good, right? I have to brag that was my hubby up there leading worship. So of course it was extra good. <laughs> um, but yeah, Anna, I thought what Anna shared today was so good, so powerful. So I'm excited. I feel like this is such a moment in history, especially for Radiant Church, but just for us as creatives and artists, like, oh my gosh, it's like we're making history right now, being a part of this conference. So I'm really excited for for what God's doing and what he's speaking, what he's already spoken and what he's going to. So um, let me just pray for us real quick. God, we just thank you for... For your love, we thank you for just an opportunity to be here, God, at this conference, this moment in history. Lord, I just thank you that you are a creative God, that you are the creator. Lord, that, um, yeah, just this morning, like as, as Caleb got up and was speaking during worship a little bit, I just felt that great revelation of the fact that you have given us a creative spirit. That the creativity that lives inside of you, God, lives inside of us. It's that same creative spirit. So, Lord, I just ask that um, as we uh, discuss and dialogue and meditate on creativity and dance and explore what that looks like in the context, context of worshiping you, that you would give us downloads from heaven. Lord, I, I pray that you would open the canopy of heaven. Lord, that you would give us fresh uh, revelation and wisdom and insight of who you are and how you created our bodies to move in a way that brings you delight and brings you pleasure, God. Insight on how we can share this, this art form with the world in such a way that they would encounter you, some for maybe the first time. So Lord, I just ask that you would come, Holy Spirit, come. We thank you that the same Holy Spirit that brings comfort and insight also brings creativity. We invite your spirit here, Jesus. Amen. 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 Sweet. Oh, hey, Rye. Um, Okay, so as I was preparing for this workshop, um, minus the plies and tondus and leaps and all that, I had to really kind of dive a little deeper. It's weird, and it's like, okay, you're going to do a dance workshop, but you're actually not going to dance. So (laughs) kind of you have to shift things a little bit, and um, yeah, maybe we could just all put our arms up or something to say that we we danced. Oh, good, Ryan. (laughs) Um, but it kind of provoked me with this question of like, what is dance? Like, what actually is dance? I think for all of us, we'd have different, probably definitions of dance. 
But as I uh, was preparing and praying and just kind of thinking about what is dance, what is dance to me, um, I'll share my story uh, in dance in just a little bit, but the, the word that I came up with is language. Um, you know, I feel like art is such an incredible icebreaker, you know, like most people have some sort of fascination or are drawn to either music or painting or dance or something, and, and it, it all tells a story. I believe it all tells a story of creation and, and what God's wanting to do in the earth, and um, I really believe that God is, is setting, setting us up for a time where he's reclaiming the arts for his glory and his gain. But as I just meditated on what is dance, I really felt like it was language. It's the ability to communicate through movement. And I feel like it's such a unique thing. Um, You know, body language, you can say a lot without saying anything at all, right? Mm -hmm. So body language is so powerful. Um, And as I was thinking about it, it's really, dance is really the only performing art that, that doesn't have to use words. You can communicate something just by the way you look or just by the way your arm moves or just by the way you position your body or just even just with the power of a leap or um, you know, the, the force of a turn. And there's just so much that can be communicated through dance, which I love. And as believers, there's so much beauty and authority when we dance, when we dance in the presence of the Lord, when we dance for his glory, whether it's in the context of a church or on stage, you know, in front of a, an audience of 500 or 5,000, but there's such authority and beauty when we dance as believers, because we carry something, we carry the the very nature of God and the creativity of God. Um, historically, every culture has their own style, just like music. And so, you know, I was thinking about this. Um, my husband and I celebrated our 10-year anniversary back in June. And we, thank you. I know I can't believe it's been almost 11 years, oh, but uh, makes me feel old. Um, but. We, we actually went to Bali. We were living in New Zealand at the time. We took a trip to Bali for our anniversary. And so we, we pull up to this resort, you know, with a taxi, and they let us out. And we're walking into the resort. And here's these gorgeous Balinese dancers welcome you, welcoming us to, to this resort. And, you know, most people have probably been on some vacation or something where they've experienced the culture by dance. Um, you know, a lot of places you, you know, get off, whether it's like a cruise or a plane or something in the airport, there's these dancers and it's repre- representing the culture. And so every culture has um, a different way of communicating who they are, expressing it in the form of dance. Um, even if, has anyone seen the Nutcracker? Okay. Yeah. I've done the Nutcracker like umpteen million times. <laughs> But um, one of the things I love is, you know, when Claire is taken to the land of sweets, there's all these ethnic dances, and she gets to really experience the world as she's, you know, Nutcrackers is the story, it's a coming-of-age tale, and so she gets to experience the world through all these different dance forms, and it's just fabulous. It's, it's part of our, our history and our culture. Um, dance is what brings people together socially. It brings relief to society. Um, people often turn to the arts in times of difficulty. It brings that sense of comfort and um, just relatability. So I was, I was thinking of, uh, has anyone seen Titanic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, probably most of us. And there's that scene, like the water's coming on the ship and it's sinking and you see these musicians and they're playing this this somber music and like in the background, everybody's frantic and running. And um, I I think that scene is so powerful because it's a beautiful representation of the fact that we turn to the arts when we need, you know, comfort in that sense of of bringing us together and belonging. And, um, you know, the the musicians leave and then, you know, I think they acknowledge each other and say, you know, it's been a pleasure uh, not dancing, playing with you this evening. And, and this, uh, the violinist starts to play again. And I love that he's playing, I think it's near my God to thee. But it's, they all come back and it's like, it's just this sense of security that the arts give us because it's been around since the beginning of time. Um, and I remember I was dancing with Kansas City Ballet and this was like 
2007 to 2009, and that was considered an economic depression. I mean, things are starting to get better, but it was like really then, you know, we were going, I hope that ticket sales are okay so that they don't have to make cuts. And they ended up making cuts and I was actually one of them. But um, I was one of the newest dancers, so I was first one in, first one out. But uh, our director, William Whitener, said um, it was so impressive. We were shocked to see that ticket sales hadn't really changed. In an economic depression, you would think the first thing that people are going to cut out is like going to the movies or going out to eat or going out to the ballet. And we, we were asking him, like, well, why do you think that ticket sales are, are still so strong? And he said, people need the arts. They need a place to come to just kind of forget about what's going on in the world and come and just, like, again, have that sense of familiarity and comfort and um, just to even, like, stimulate that sense of hope in, like, a hopeless um, time. So we need the arts. We need dance. We need dance. Um, I love this. I found this, this quote by C.S. Lewis. He says, the most valuable thing in the Psalms, the most valuable thing the Psalms do for me is to express the same delight in God which made David dance. I, like, I, that just spoke to me. Um, you know, most of us uh, know the story in the Bible where David is just dancing unashamedly, wildly, with such freedom and abandonment. And, you know, for a guy that... Um, that messed up pretty big, you know, just to have that, that sense of like freedom and vulnerability before the Lord, just enjoying the Lord and the Lord enjoying him. I'm like, oh, that's so good. That's what I want to like just bottle up <laughs> and hold on to. So I just want to encourage you. Um, I have always felt like the Psalms really speak to me. And I don't know if it's just because there's that sense of um, poeticism um, but just the, the beauty and the nature of God and creation. And it almost like, when sometime, sometimes when I'm reading the Psalms, I'm like, this is almost like a dance. Like, you could just even picture, if you close your eyes, how, how it would play out in the, the stories of the Psalms that, that David shares. Um, so I would it really encourage you to, to read the Psalms um, regularly if you don't. In fact, in the bookstore, there is a, like a, a Psalms journal so it's the whole book of the Psalms, and then you can write. So just as artists and, and dancers, um, I would really encourage you to do that. I loved what, uh, what Lee said last night, and Anna touched on it again, that creativity is born out of intimacy. Um, so if, if you didn't catch that, that's definitely something to, to take hold of. Um, you know, we have a real relationship with God. That's accessible to us. And like I said before, just the sense that God is so creative and he's just waiting for us to come to him, you know. He's just sitting there waiting for us to come to him and ask him what's on his heart, what moves his heart, what are the things that are important to him. Um, so, I mean, I could probably go on and on and on, and I won't, because I know we, we touched on it quite a bit last night, but... I would just encourage you as, as you're um, just searching for deeper levels of creativity to really connect with the heart of the Father, connect with the Creator, connect with His creativity, because um, there's, there's so much. I mean, it's like as vast as the ocean is the creativity of God, and He just wants to share it with us. And I feel like, well, I'll, I'll talk about it more, but anyways. Um, yeah, so throughout scripture, dance is a part of worship to release joy, to release gladness, and it comes from a place of overflow that which can only be expressed, I think, to the fullness with our bodies. Um, I don't know about you, but have you ever like listened to music or you're in worship and you're like, like almost just shaking, like bubbling up, like, oh, you just want to move and you can't like, you, you know, you don't want to contain it. You just want to let it out. And um, like I loved Anna talked about that a little bit today, too. Just that feeling of like, you just need to move, you know. And I feel like, oh, that's, that's exactly it. Just that full expression of worship before a living God um, that com comes from the form of dance. Um, okay, and because we are created, of course, in the image of God, we can use our beautiful bodies to bring him glory. 
And like I said before, I really believe that this is a time that God is re- reclaiming the arts for his glory and his gain. And just the fact that, you know, the Culvers and the Asbury's have had this dream in their heart for so many years to, um, to, to have a, a platform where people can come creatives and just learn about different aspects of the arts and creativity. And it's like, it's really happening. And I believe that it's birthing something in the kingdom of God. Um, so I'm, I'm just so excited to, to be a part of it. So since we're not going to actually be dancing, I have a few questions that you can um, put in your journal or jot down in your phone or however you like to keep record of things. Um, And the first question is, is of course, the why. Why do we dance? So you can take these questions, meditate on them, dialogue with the Lord, um, dialogue with fellow fellow dancers, um, but I, uh, I don't know if everyone was in here, but I mentioned that we have a three-year-old, a little girl, Pearl is her name, she's three and a half, and she is very spirited, very full of uh, creativity, and loves to dance and sing, and most of the singing sounds like yelling, <laughs> which I'm like, shh, you have to learn to be quiet, there's a baby coming, <laughs> but um, it's just amazing to see such passion in a three-year-old. Mm-hmm. Um, and we recently let her watch the movie Leap. Has anybody seen yes, Leap? Yes, it's yes. so cute. It's such a cute movie. But there's this question. It's, it's towards the end of the movie. And, uh, you know, the ballet instructor from Paris asks Felicie and... Camille? I can't remember their names. She was just watching it the other day, and I felt like I was just having all this revelation, like, oh my gosh, this is so good. But he asks them each uh, to answer this question of why do you dance? And um, I think it's Camille or Camilla or whatever. I don't know the French way to say it, but um, her response is, well, you know, my, my mother makes me. My mother's made me, and you know, throughout the movie, you see her, like, basically torturing her daughter. It's like that show Dance Moms. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> seen that. I've, I've taught at a competition studio before, and some of that was very real. Um, but her response is like, it's just out of duty, really, um, because it's, my mom makes me. And then he, he looks to Felicity, and he says, like, why do you dance? And she says, it's always been a part of me. And it's, you know, like as a, as a dancer, it's, you can feel it in your, in, in your bones, in your very being, in your core. It's something that you're passionate about. Um, it's something that you can't help but share and, and be a part of. And so I, I love that response and just like even the revelation that I got from my three-year-old's Disney, Disney, maybe Disney movie. Um, just the passion that comes from being able to express yourself and your love for something uh, through dance. I remember um, I grew up just outside Washington, D.C., which was great as a, a young dancer because all the big ballet companies uh, would come and tour through Washington, D.C. And so I got to see a lot of dance from a young age, which I think really um, helped set me up just for even further fascination of this gorgeous or art form. And um, I even had opportunities. They had this master class program you had to audition for, but where each dance company would come through and you could go take a a master class, so either from their director or their uh, ballet master, ballet mistress, and it was, I mean, every, I remember this one, it was, um, I think, National Ballet of Cuba. They didn't speak any English, and so it's like, well, thank God there's this universal language in dance, because otherwise we all would have been like, you know, blink, blink, what are are you saying to us? But I remember I got to go see American Ballet Theater when they were on tour, and the the ballet um, uh, academy that I grew up in, uh, some of the the principal dancers in American Ballet Theater had trained at our School. So I got to go and, you know, I got to go backstage and see the dressing rooms and the costumes and the hair and like, it was just so magical for me. But I remember um, getting to meet, I don't even remember who it was, but I, I remember meeting this person and um, somebody had introduced, from my studio had introduced me to somebody from Amer- American Ballet Theater and 
um, you know, they said, this is Betty, and she has the soul of a dancer. And I went, wow, that's like, it just nails it dead on the head. You know, it's, it's that passion, it's that driving force, it's, it's in your bones, it's in your soul, it's what makes you come alive. You know, it's like, dance is the, the very thing that I love most on this earth, and just the ability to express myself through dance is just such a powerful, it's a tool, it's a weapon. Um, so, anyways, okay, so that's, why do you dance? Why do you dance? Ask yourself that question. Um, the second question I have is, what draws you to dance? What is it about dance that draws you to it? And can you remember that, that first time that you either saw dance or felt dance in your own body? Or, you know, maybe you took a dance class. As children, we're, we're drawn to, mu- to music. And it's one of my favorite things to do probably is put music on and watch little kids like, you know, they just start. As soon as they hear music, it's like they just can't help it. It's a part of them. It's a part of us. And at some point, we become aware of our surroundings. We become aware that people are watching us, that there's potential criticism or scrutiny or whatever, and, and we stop. And I think, man, if we could just get back to that place, like there's that, that famous quote, like sing like no one's listening and love like you've never been hurt, dance like no one's watching. So I feel like, man, if we could just get back to that place of in dance, in the context of worship, to feel like we're actually just dancing before an audience of one. Like, as if God is the only one watching us, and we know that he takes delight in it, and he takes pleasure in it. And, and that, who cares what anybody else thinks, but you just know that it's, it's beautiful, and it's worship, and it's what you love to do, and what you feel created to do. Um, I looked up the definition of dancer. It says it's someone who dances either as a job or for pleasure. It's a person who moves his or her body and feet in rhythm to music. My third question for you is, what does the Lord have for you through dance? What does the Lord have for you individually through dance? So some of you may just dance on your own or may be studying dance or you may have like a dance team or a group at your church or maybe you just enjoy dance. But I believe if it's something that, that we feel so called to and so drawn to that the Lord must have something for us individually through dance. I think, you know, the, the classics are so valuable. I mean, I feel so privileged to have had the, the career that I have had and to have been able to perform some of the, you know, the oldest ballets of our time and um, even some, like I had the, one of my favorite uh, pieces I ever danced was uh, more of a contemporary neoclassical from Gerald Arpino of Joffrey Ballet and he said it way back in the 80s um, when he was the director of Joffrey Ballet and, you know, I think about all these classics but the reality is God is still creating. You know, he's not done. We're not done as, as artists, as dancers. Um, I was listening to um, the Helsers podcast recently. Has anybody listened to that? If you're not subscribed, you should subscribe to their... It is so good. Um, but he, The Helsers. Yeah, so it's um, Jonathan David and Melissa Helser. And they have a podcast, and you can subscribe to it. And um, it's, it's so incredible. I was listening to it walking on the treadmill the other day, trying to get the baby out, (laughs) trying to get things moving. Um, But he was talking about how people will say everything under the sun has already been created. And so, I mean, yes, maybe that's true, but there's this whole other realm in heavenly places above the sun that is still yet to be tapped into. And I feel like even like what Caleb was talking about a little bit this morning is that we are called to be seated in in heavenly places. And we have 
the accessibility to the throne room of God. And there's still so much left to be created. So yes, there's so much value to the classics and the, the things that we love going to the theater to see. And even music. I mean, even in Christian music, you watch the progression over the last maybe 10, even 20 years. And it's like, it is just so much more powerful and moving. And I'm so glad that, <laughs> I'm so glad that music has progressed. But I believe it, sh- it should be the same for dance. So there's still so much left to be tapped into. God is still creating. So my question is, why does, or what does the Lord have for you through dance? So I'll just quickly share my story um, in dance. Um, so my, my story with dance really started with my mom, I guess, um, if I think about it. My mom grew up, she was uh, one of four kids, always wanted to dance always wanted to be a ballerina. And um, they didn't have uh, enough money for her to be in in dance class. So when she was pregnant with me, she just knew it was a girl. I think maybe her pregnancy was different or something, but she just knew. And I think, like she said, that she's danced vicariously through me. Um, So when I was three, she had my, my little brother. And I was not too excited about the new intruder in my life, apparently. So my mom and my dad decided, okay, it's time to put her in, in dance. So I did, you know, ballet, tap, and jazz, ballet, tap, and jazz. It's like what everybody starts with, ballet, tap, and jazz. Um, and at, I don't even remember, you know, like Dolly Dinkle Dance Studio or something like that. Um, and little did they know when they put me in dance at three years old that I would just grow to love it to the point where I'd decide to make a career out of it. Um, and so when I was uh, about nine, I auditioned for like the top ballet academy in the D.C. metropolitan area. It's called the Maryland Youth Ballet. And um, I was, I think, one of four girls that was accepted in that year. And so it was a huge sacrifice for my family. Oh. <laughs> Walking out. Um, it was a huge sacrifice for my family. The ballet studio was probably like, well, we had to go on the, the Beltway, which is like an absolute nightmare in the D.C. area. But um, I got to train at, this, at this, um, this ballet academy and continued to be versed in you know, ballet and um, modern and jazz and character and flamenco and we had different you know summer programs and probably by the time I was 12 or 13 I knew I really wanted to pursue dance as a career which is a huge decision to make Mm -hmm. so what that looked like for me was I would probably dance five days a week um, you know four to five hours a day I would rehearse on the weekends for upcoming shows I would go away for summer programs you know five six weeks at a time dancing like 8 to 11 hours a day. But I loved it. I mean, I just absolutely loved it. There is nothing else I'd rather do. Um, And then I graduated high school early so that I could spend what would have been my senior year um, focusing on my my career that I wanted to pursue. And so I I auditioned for several different companies and decided to go with Orlando Ballet. So glad I did because I met my husband in Orlando um, at Starbucks. (laughs) He was not a dancer. <laughs> um, he was a customer and then became a very more frequent customer after we met. But that's another story. So I was uh, dancing as a, like a trainee or apprentice with the Orlando Ballet. And then, what's up, Caleb? And then uh, after that, I came back to Maryland. Um, Ryan had gone to Kansas City to be a part of the House of Prayer there and uh, was, was doing the music school. He was one of the first groups. So he was like the guinea pig for the music academy in Kansas City at, at the House of Prayer. And so I would come and visit him. And there was one big ballet company, Kansas City Ballet. And so uh, I remember the, the day before I was going to come and I think either audition or take class. Uh, Ryan was actually working at Starbucks part time. And in walks this really tall Colombian guy, and Ryan goes, gosh, he looks like a dancer. And um, the back of his jacket said Kansas City Ballet. And he's like, what are the odds? So he introduces himself and says, you know, my girlfriend's actually coming to Kansas City tomorrow. She's supposed to audition with the company. And he said, oh, my wife and I will look after her. And 
Um, it was this instant connection with them. It was really cool. So I go and I audition with Kansas City Ballet, and um, I got to go just take company class, which is great because then it's not like the cattle call where you have to wear this number and you're like standing there waiting for your group, and you just kind of, it's just more enjoyable and less stressful, I think. So I auditioned, and um, that was probably in February, and I get a call from the director. And he says, you know, my name's uh, William Whitener. I'm with Kansas City Ballet, and uh, we're very interested in hiring you. But we can't offer you a job yet until all the dancers had turned their contracts, their intent to commit to the following year. So he said, you know, please stay in touch with me. And so, like, every month he would call me. And I remember it was like the dancers turned their contracts in, I think, it was like April 10th, and I got a phone call from him April 11th. And it says, we'd like to offer you the job. I was like, yes! <laughs> Ryan and I were wanting to get married at that point, so we were like, double yes! <laughs> my parents didn't want me to just move to Kansas City for some guy and give up on my dreams and all they had invested. I mean, rightfully so. And I'm glad that they weren't like, sure, marry whoever you want. I mean, Ryan's awesome, but you know, it's, it's nice to have your parents' approval. Um, and so I, I uh, danced with Kansas City Ballet, did lots of Twyla Tharp, so much Twyla Tharp. Um, I think I'd be okay if I never did another Twyla Tharp ballet. But um, it, was, it was really great. It was my first like, real job with a professional company. I loved it. Um, and as I mentioned before, it was an economic depression. They had to make cuts. I think they cut like four or five dancers, and I was one of them. And I remember with it, I didn't only lose my career, I really lost my identity. And it was like, you know, from the time I was three up until now, I was, you know, 20, 23, 24, so for 20 years, this had been who I was. It was, you know, Betty the Ballerina, Betty Ballerina, Betty Ballerina. And um, it, was, it was crushing for me. Um, so it was really, really hard. I danced with a smaller company in Kansas City. Then I got a job with um, a ballet company out on the West Coast in Oregon, Eugene Ballet Company. So I got hired there as, as a soloist and then moved on as a principal dancer. So I was like at the top of the, this company and um, I'll be a little bit uh, vulnerable here in this story, but it like, because it was a touring company and Ryan stayed in Kansas City, it almost destroyed our marriage. Like really, almost destroyed our marriage. Like it's the mercy of the Lord that we're still married today. Um, and not just because of, of me taking that job. There was other things in the big picture. But um, at the time, I felt like, man, this is like kind of my ticket out of here. It's my dream job. You know, they had built a tutu for me for uh, Swan Lake. It was like my dream role as a professional dancer to be like the principal in the company and dance Swan Lake. And so, um, you know, I, I took the job and then re-signed for the following year against um, my husband's wishes. And um, I, I loved it. I mean, it was like, I just felt like I was at the top. I had made it. It was what I loved to do. But the Lord continued to like, pursue my heart and woo my heart in, in that time. And so um, it got to the point where he had asked me to, to break my contract with the ballet company. So you sign for a whole year, whether it's six months or nine months. And um, I remember going, I just can't do this. Like, this is what I've spent my whole life training for and aspiring to be, and, and God is asking me to, to surrender everything, to lay it all down, um, you know, for, for his sake and for the sake of my marriage. And, you know, now I'm going, it's like for the sake of our future generation. And it was so much bigger than what I could even see at the time. But um, I did it. By the grace of God, I did it. So I, I broke my contract. Um, I did not get to dance um, Odette and Odile in, the, in Swan Lake, which is really hard. So I came back to Kansas City, and you know things were still really, really, really hard in my marriage. And um, I, God spoke to me about doing this internship through the House of Prayer, um, and so I said, "Lord, I'll only do it if you do A, B, and C." <laughs> and it was like, bam, 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 like right away within a week. So here I am doing this internship. I show up on the first day in the prayer room, and they had all the interns step into the aisles and like had people pray and prophesy for them. And so this person comes to me. I don't remember her name. I can kind of remember what she looks like, and she's praying for me, and she said, I know this is really strange, but 
are you a dancer? And I said, yeah, I am actually. And she, she just began to prophesy and say, you know, I, I feel like you've had to, she said, I saw you like leaping in the air and dancing. And she said, I feel like you had to, to lay this down and surrender this thing that you love so much, but God has not taken it away from you. He's going to give it back to you. I mean, I just probably was like weeping and weeping and weeping. And um, I remember the second week of the internship, because um, when you break your contract, especially on that level, you're like blacklisted. I mean, probably no one's going to want to hire you. And I was thinking, this is it. My career is over. My marriage might be over. I might be done for like the rest of my life. Um, but I remember the next week, God asked me to do a fast. I had never done like just a water fast. But the Lord said, I want you to do a fast, three days only water. And uh, I remember it was like the second day... Um, of the fast during the internship um, the Lord I was in the prayer room and, and just like weeping and weeping and just being so like ministered to by the Lord and feeling the tangible presence and the kindness of the Lord and um, I remember him saying Betty you're not only a dancer you're not just Ryan's wife you're my beloved mm-hmm. you're the one that I love you're the one that I created and it was out of this place that everything changed And um, so God restored my identity just even in that moment. Um, He restored our marriage, which is amazing. So Bali was a big celebration when we went. Um, We got to renew our vows on our five-year anniversary, which was really powerful. And so when we went to Bali, we celebrated five years married, or five years restored, ten years married. And and he even restored um, my career. So... I've had the ability to to dance and have had really cool opportunities since that. And just, it's this beautiful thing of surrender. Um, I feel like it's it's my story through through dance specifically is just surrendering it to God and seeing what he can do with it. Because he can do far more than we ever could just in our own strength and in our own plans. Like when we really give it to God and lay it at his feet, he can resurrect anything and make it bigger and better than we could ever imagine. So, um, so that's kind of my, my story with dance. Thanks for letting me share it. Um, so what I want to talk about a little bit more is extravagance, excellence, and giving God our best in the context of dance. Whether it's as a profession or if it's just for pleasure or if it's you know at, at our church, whatever context. Um, there's a reason professional dancers train their entire lives to make this such a, a huge profession, and people are willing to spend so much to see this gorgeous art form. Um, so I just want to encourage you, if you feel called to dance, if you love to dance, if you have any sort of a platform, I just would really encourage you to get the training needed. Um, just because it's if we're dancing before the Lord, we really want to give him our best. You know, it's, a, it's our heart's desire to give him nothing but the best we can offer him as, as a sacrifice of worship and praise. Um, so, you know, whether you have a group at, at your church, you know, bring somebody in or find a local dance studio that has adult classes. Um, you know, really get the training needed. Um, if you're taking this to a level where you really feel like you're doing this before the Lord, before that audience of one like we talked about. Even in church, you know, we want to put the best musicians on the stage to lead the room in an encounter with Jesus, and I believe it should be the same with dance. You know, we want to offer the Lord excellence and nothing but the best. Um, and for some of us, it's, it's really a calling. Like for me, uh, because I, I became a Christian at a very young age. I was, I think, seven when I... Um, ask the Lord into my heart. And for me, it was like, wow, God's given me this talent that I want to use for his glory. But as a Christian, I want to further the kingdom of God through the talents he's given, he's given me. And so I, I saw this beautiful like marriage or partnership with, okay, Lord, you've given me this, this gift of, of dance, and I want to turn it around and use it for your glory. I want to further the kingdom of God. So I really felt like it was a calling for me to be a light in the darkness. And for some of you, you might experience that, whether it's, you know, you, you dance on a stage or maybe even in college or something like that. 
But there's so many people that are drawn to the arts because they're trying to fill that void that they have inside of them, you know. And so they're hungry, they're broken, they're confused, they're longing for that, that filling and that fullness that, that only the Lord can satisfy. So for some of us, that calling is even bigger than just going, okay, I'm going to dance, I'm going to dance before the Lord, but how can I use this gifting that God's given me to further the kingdom of God, to help bring healing, to help bring encounter with the Lord um, through such a powerful art form? It's really, I found, um, it was an entryway into their world. You know, like a lot of times we might not have an easy path into the world of unbelievers. And, and dance is like a universal, like I said, it's a universal language. Mm -hmm. Everybody can relate to the arts and, you know, for us as, as dancers, specifically dance. And so I, you know, think of times that I've been able to um, pray for dancers. I've been able to prophesy. I've been able to in, have invitations to invite them to things. And it's just such a great platform. Um, I feel like that God gives us this ticket into the world of, of non-believers and people that are just hurting and broken and suffering and longing for, for Jesus. They just don't know it yet. Um, and as I've been as I, as I have been pr and praying and preparing um, just for this workshop, feeling like many of you are called to choreograph. Has anybody choreographed before? Yeah, so I, I want to pray for you guys especially um, before we're done, but I just was really feeling that some of you in here are really called to choreography. Um, yeah, like when you close your eyes, when you listen to music, can you see the shapes and patterns of heaven? You know, like right now, God is surrounded by beauty. He's surrounded by music. He's surrounded by angels and, you know, people that are declaring his worth and, and his, his glory and his beauty and his holiness. And I just, I really felt that for some of you guys, you're, you're called to see the shapes and patterns that are surrounding the throne room of God right now. Um, so I, yeah, like I said, I, I want to pray for you guys afterwards. Um, but I feel like, man, if we could, as dancers, as artists, as choreographers, if we can tap into those things, like I said, above the sun in the throne room of God, creating, you know, in encounters where people will come and ushering in the presence of God and, you know, prophetic dance and, and the power of the gospel. Like, oh man, I just feel like it's, God's going to reclaim this. He's going to do it all for his glory and his gain. And I feel like it's an invitation for all of us to be a part of it in some capacity. Uh, my husband and I recently got to go see Grand Rapids Ballet, and um, I have a friend that's a resident choreographer there, and so um, it's been really neat. We've only been here for a few months, but I feel like I already have this relationship, which has just been such a gift, because I love being connected to the dance world, and we just moved from New Zealand, and there weren't any performance opportunities, so I got to teach there a little bit, and um, had some cool opportunities, but we, we got to go up to this show um, about a month ago, and there were some very uh, powerful pieces on the program. Um, this particular program, they have a lot of the, the dancers from the ballet company choreograph, and so like, I'm reading the description of all these different pieces, and some of them are just like unbelievably abstract. Like I would have missed the mark if somebody asked me like, okay, what was this one about? But some of them, like there was one that was about, um, about a very recent political issue that happened, and um, just the amount of creativity and conviction that it was choreographed with, and then there was another one that was, I think it was like about pollution or you know something like that. Just things that are very relative to to today and what's going on in the world around us. But I just was left thinking like, how much more powerful is it going to be when we as Christians are tapping into the the heartbeat and the creativity of God and using that in the context of dance, going like, if these non-Christians are, are creating such 
powerful pieces, without the Spirit of God, how much more powerful is it going to be for us who are filled with the, the Holy Spirit, with the creativity of God, to reach the world? And I'm just thinking, like, gosh, theater's filled with, with people that are, are just drawn to what's happening on the stage um, or, you know, in the context of church uh, to experience God, maybe for the first time, you know? through, like I said, the power of the gospel or, or whatever it is. But I'm just, I'm so excited because God is still creating. He's still creating. And there is that invitation to partner with him in, in what he's doing to further his kingdom on the earth. Um, so just a few more things, and then uh, we'll do some, some Q&A if you guys have any questions for me. Um, but... As I have been reflecting, and even for me, I have not been dancing too much recently um, in my current state, but uh, so it's, it's, it was, I feel like I'm so thankful, Caleb, that you asked me to, to do this workshop, even though I couldn't dance, but it, it ma- made me really ask some questions for myself, too. Um, and, and going back to that first question of why, why do we dance? So for me, there's three things that I kind of, in my dialogue with the Lord, uh, came up with. And the first is that we are created to worship God. We are created to worship. Um, you know, dance is such an expression of the creativity of, of the Lord. And, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all worshiping something, right? And so I feel like, you know, for us as dancers to have the, the ability and the freedom that I mean, not everybody can dance, right? So it's like truly is a gift if you can express yourself in in worship through the gift of dance. Um, So the first is is worshiping God. Like I said, I mean, I just love closing my eyes and trying to like, okay, Lord, give me pictures. Give me impressions of your throne room. What's happening? What's happening on the sea of glass right now? What are, you know, what are they declaring? Other than we know that they're declaring holy, holy, holy. But what else is happening? Um, We have the ability to worship God through dance. The second of why we dance um, is to share his heart and reveal his glory. My prayer um, before any time I went on stage, uh, I'm sure when I was younger too, but more recently in my my career, 10 10 or 10 plus years, um, has just been that, that that the light inside of me would be felt by those watching in the audience. That from the moment that I stepped on the stage, that God would take glory in every step, that he would orchestrate every step that I took in such a way that people sitting in the furthest row would go, there's something, there's something inside of her, you know? There's something inside of that one that I have to know what it is or, you know, just that the light in, inside of me would be so explosive that people would, would feel drawn to the Lord just through, and not even in the context of, like, Christian dancing, but even in, in my professional career. Like, oh, Lord, please let, first, let it be worshipful movement, but secondly, let it reveal your glory to anybody that's watching. And the third, um, why do we dance or, or why do I dance? It's for enjoyment. Like, let's be real. We all, it's, it's fun, right? It's, it's that, like I said, it's just that fullness of expression. Um, and, yeah, it's just like, it's, you know, it's what I love to do most on the earth. But I feel like it's this, when we're dancing before the audience of one in such an extravagant way, it's a reciprocal expression of enjoyment. It's God enjoying us as he's watching us use something that he's given us as a gift. And it's us enjoying him yeah. and this, this gift that, that he's given us. So I feel like, you know, anytime you can, dance. <laughs> dance as often as you can, dance anywhere you can. Because um, it is that, that sense of enjoyment. And I feel like in that place, that's where freedom is released. That's where, you know, chains are set free. That's where healing happens. I think it's, it's really cool, you know, and, and you're in a worship service and you hear people just give this, like, Rah! this shout. But I don't know. For me, I feel like it's so much more powerful if I can just use the body that God's given me in such a powerful and beautiful way to bring that release of healing and freedom and um, just full expression of worship. So 
Anyways, um, yeah, we have a few more minutes, so if you have any questions, shoot, and then uh, I'll pray for you. Yeah? So my curiosity is, has God given you a vision for the church from teaming up with the worship students? Good question. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, oddly enough, um, like I mentioned, we, my husband and I have only been here about five, five months? October, November, December, January, February, five months, coming up on five months. Um, we were living in New Zealand for two years, serving as missionaries with a house of prayer and a YWAM base. And about a year before we even started the conversation with Radiant, um, Caleb uh, messaged us and said, hey, Betty, I want to pick your brain. Um, I mean, like, Radiant was not even on our radar. We were loving life in New Zealand, loving the assignment that God had for us there. And he said, uh, you know, I want to pick your brain. We'd like to, to start some sort of, like, a dance school or studio or, or a place where people can, can come and, you know, bring their children. And it's not like, you know, the booty-shaking competition <laughs> dance studio. <laughs> Probably. I could just hear you saying that. So, um, you know, we probably chatted on the phone for an hour, and then fast forward a year and a half later, here we are. Because at the end of that conversation, Caleb goes, okay, so when are you guys moving here? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, that's funny, that's great. Um, Like, I'm here for any questions that you have about starting your your dance, uh, whatever whatever it was. Because I think, you know, like I said, this is, and they've kept saying, this has been such a dream in their heart to have a platform for artists to come, um, just grow an expression of worship and, um, and in their craft. And so I feel like, yes, I feel like it will happen. I don't know how or when. Um, please, please. No, no, please do. I, I love that question because that basically is actually, there's probably around that time of the year half ago. Um, and uh, basically, the Lord has spoken a couple things couple of kind of random circumstances related to the Lord speaking related to dance and then at the same time I met Kim was over here at the end and in like three days we saw her in like three different random locations and she <laughs> she met me she filled out a worship team application she was like I'm not on the worship team she's like I dance but you know I, does that involve worship and, and so we went up meeting and I kind of told her the same thing I was like man I, I love dance I, I don't know how to incorporate it I'm just kind of asking the question and trying to pay attention. To be honest, I just have not seen it done. And what Betty shared is so valuable about it, having excellence and purity and pointing to Jesus. And I, I just haven't really seen it uh, done. There are a couple challenges. One, I haven't seen it done that well that often. Um, two, there's just a natural challenge of, of being in Michigan and where people are at with expression. Yeah. The vast majority of people are very put off by artistic mm-hmm. expression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The answer is not to just go insane with artistic yeah. expression and force it like a gun in your face and be this way because it's going to freak them out. It's not kind. So you want to slowly invite them to it. And uh, But the Lord in this swirl, like there was like three or four things and it was crazy. It was out of nowhere. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm listening. And, uh, and that's when I messaged Ryan and said, dude, would Betty be willing to talk to us? I just so respect, because she is, uh, she's an insane dancer, just so you guys know. She's probably being humble, but incredibly gifted, Thanks. beautiful dancer. And, and we have a heart to train kids, but also to see it be released in worship. I'm not a dancer, I'm an edit. This would be horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, Caleb, you movie. never know. <laughs> the Lord loves it, but no one else would. So. <laughs> Even in asking Betty to do this, this workshop, and, and uh, Lee and I have had these dialogues and discussions, and it's like, man, we, we, we want to see it, it happen, and we don't know how, and, and a lot of people have, have said, let's do it, and they don't do it right, and they have to pull it back, and then all the dancers in the community are so wounded, you know, we had a chance, and then, but, but it, 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 wasn't, it didn't serve them because they, we didn't set them up well. And so, my heart, I, like, I want to see an expression of it, whether it's in worship or tied to worship or it's separate as performance. Yeah, that, that's good. That, to me, because there, there is something that is so liberating. And, and a couple of encounters where I've seen a room go from bondage to freedom.
freedom, yeah. that yeah. moment of yeah. peace that produced yeah. it. Yeah. So there's a greater anointing on it, and I have a huge heart for that in worship. And so I don't want to do it, and Lee is so good at this too, I don't want to do it poorly and dam do damage. But we're really leaning in and asking, asking the question, and you know, we have a couple people in the community. Betty being here is massive because of her experience. Yeah. We have people like Kim in our community who uh, is dancing and teaching uh, children to dance and dances in the presence of God. We have certain outlets and expressions for that. And so, so yeah, we we are moving for it and dreaming it. And so, I mean, I maybe you know you have a breakthrough in mind and have the right model. And so <laughs> we're asking the question and trying to take step forward. So anyway, sorry, I didn't want to steal all your time. That's good. Thank I, you. I, I like, felt like I was like I kind of want to like jump in here too because mm -hmm. I know that you probably can't go like you can fully say. It, yep. Yeah. That's great. Well, that's very no, timely. No, we're leading in that, and the Lord God is Betty. And I know <laughs> it was for more than you know just her being awesome and being here. And I know that that piece is going to tie in. So. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, I had to dive into my trail mix, but it's okay. Um, shoot, what was it? Oh, I just heard a lot of my own story and yours in the mm -hmm. the moment you found out like dance was your identity. Yeah. Because I went from like four to eighteen. And that was all I did. Yeah. Like, that was the only thing to Rachel Sims. And so when the Lord asked me to stop, yeah. I was like, ah, okay, right. sure. And so I feel like it kind of got ripped away. And I actually recently moved down the road from my last dance studio. So at first I was like, okay, that hurts. <laughs> like, that's kind of a slap in the face. So I guess my question is, how did you... I don't know, because there's part of me that's like, Mm, maybe the Lord didn't take it, maybe it'll come back. Yeah. But how did you enter that in, like enter back into that without falling apart? Yeah. <laughs> or like just going back to like, oh no, this is who I am. Because there's yeah. something about it that's like, that's when I feel most myself, that's when yeah. I feel the most beautiful and like yeah. free. Yeah. But there's so I have a hard time separating, like, this isn't who I am, but this is something that expresses the fullness of yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 it definitely makes sense. Um, I feel like, you know, like you said, similar, it was, I didn't realize how much of my identity was actually wrapped up in dance. I mean, I, I knew that I was loved by the Lord, I knew how God felt about me. Um, but I didn't realize that my identity was actually so wrapped up in me as a dancer that if I, if that was taken away, that I didn't know who I was anymore. And so I feel like it was the kindness of the Lord, because I thought, I thought it, it might be done, like, and I didn't know, and it was really scary. And so I think the first thing to do is just start asking the Lord questions, and, you know, I don't know how old you are now, but hopefully you've had some time to really wrestle with, who am I? Who, who does the Lord say I am? Who has he created me to be? And is this something that the Lord is giving back um, as a part of restoring your true identity um, and the fullness of, of who the Lord says you are? And for me, um, I, I learned to make decisions, because sometimes we can feel like we have a good option and we choose it, but it might be the very thing that takes us out of the will of God, mm -hmm. um, which was a very sober in reality for me, because when I took the job in Oregon, I felt like it seems like the door's open. I've been praying for a door open, but that doesn't mean that it's the will of God, and it can be the very door that takes you outside the will of God. So as I, as I stepped back into the will of God on God's terms, um, peace was the thing that was my indicator. So when I prayed, I felt such, like, I don't even know how to explain it. This such a sense of peace that I knew that I knew that, that it, was, it was the Lord. And so, yeah, I would just encourage you. I would just think, I think my husband just picked up my daughter. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. She was just at preschool. Um, 
So I would just encourage you to um, to dialogue with the Lord and pray and just see if you if you feel that sense of peace because you know who knows maybe the reason you moved to where you are so you could dance again you know and God's opening that door for you again and if if you've completely surrendered it and and you feel peace about stepping back into it as as a, a daughter of the Lord restored in, in the fullness of who you are and your identity, then who knows what could, could happen. Um, yeah. So I, I would encourage you to, to pray, talk to the Lord, and just use that sense of peace to be your indicator. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Find out the gender of your baby. It's a boy. Oh, yep. Cool. So we have a little girl. Now we have a little boy. Wasn't what she ordered, but yeah. <laughs> she's actually already said, Mommy, um, after the doctor takes the baby out, can you put a girl baby in there? I'm like, okay. But I'll, right, okay. She talks about her sister. I'm like, but just to clarify, this is a brother. Yeah, yeah, it's a brother, but my sister. I'm like, okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. She loves to dance. I went back to rehearsals when she was three months old, and so she's just grown up around it and loves it. Actually, that was the motivation for potty training. She wanted to go to ballerina class, and I said, well, you can't wear, well, in New Zealand, we say nappies. You can't wear nappies to ballerina class, and that was it. She was, like, on the potty. So, yeah, that was awesome. Yep. I have a question. Yes. Um, I know that we've, like, you've sort of talked about this a little bit, I feel like. Um, and there's a lot of talk about like prophetic worship and yeah. instrumental prophecy, and, and we've experienced that this morning and last yeah. night and everything. Yeah. And um, I just want to know maybe what your thoughts are on like dance being a form of prophecy or being a form of prophetic worship and how how you know, you would incorporate that into church or into our, our daily worship with the Lord. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just what it, what it looks like and what does that even mean, like dance being prophetic? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yes. <laughs> I think that it is possible and um, at Caleb touching it. I have not seen it really done or done well with excellence in the context of, of church or worship service. But I feel like an excellent place to start is, is in your living room. You know, if you're reading the word and you just feel this like sudden urge to, to get up and, and to move, I feel like that is a form of, of prophetic worship and prophetic dance can be tied into um, just that that sense of and gift of prophecy. Um, but I have such a vision for it. I think um, I've seen it happen a little bit where whether it's an individual or it could be somebody, um, you know, just like in the context of a, a worship team, you have a leader and they're the ones that are kind of like trumpeting what's happening and really um, yeah. helping guide where the spirit is leading them as a team. So I feel like we will see that in the context of um of wor- an act of worship in the church. I'm believing for it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, but I, I have seen like glimpses of it where I'll see a group of, of dancers and there's somebody leading and you can see they're just so in tune with the Holy Spirit and the way they move. And it'll be like, you know, maybe four or five dancers behind them or with them kind of carrying out this move. And it's almost this like, call the battle, you know, like we're doing this together and the authority of the Lord. And um, so I, I don't know exactly what it's going to look yeah. like, but I think it starts in your living room and just keep asking the Lord, like, God, what does that look like? What could it look like? Yeah. What are the possibilities? Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Last chance. Okay, I'll pray for you. And can I just, the, the ones that really feel called to choreography, could you just stand up? I really want to pray for you. Yeah. And maybe if people around them just want to put their hand on them, if you feel comfortable with that. 
Yeah, so Lord, I just thank you for, for the gift of dance. Lord, I just thank you for the downloads from heaven. God, I ask that you would give us an eternal lens. Lord, I thank you that we, um, as, as creatives, as dancers, have the ability to worship you and to enjoy you in such a way um, that brings excitement and joy to your heart, Lord. I pray that, that our dance would be an overflow of your heart and your love and your passion. And God, I just pray for these ones right now that feel called to choreograph, to, to put into motion the, the heartbeat and the rhythms and the patterns of heaven the very movements that are happening around your throne room, Lord. I just thank you that everything under the sun um, has not been created, that there's a whole nother level that we can tap into. Lord, I thank you for the creative spirit inside each and every one of us as believers. Lord, I just ask for dreams in the night. Lord, I pray over these ones that feel called to choreograph, God, that you would give them dreams, that they would see movement that they would see shapes and patterns, that they would hear music, Lord, that has has maybe not even been written, God. I pray for divine collaboration um, with you. And Lord, I just pray that you would open up doors that no man can shut um, in in the way of, of dance. And Lord, that as dancers, that we would bring healing and that we would bring freedom and and liberation and just such joy um, in the form of worship, God. I thank you for each and every one that's here today, Lord. I just ask that you would um, deepen our revelation of who you are and how you feel for us, God, who you made us to be and how um, just what you have for us, Lord, as it relates to to dance on this earth and in eternity, God, that you would give us glimpses into eternity of what you have in the way of dance, God. Lord, I pray that you would stir up creativity in each and every one of us, God. We love you. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you for the gift of dance. We thank you for it, God. We thank you that we can enjoy it and that we can worship you with it, Lord, and that we can give you glory. And we just say everything is yours, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.